Welcome back to Flat Ride of the Week, episode 27. Today, Flat Ride of the Week makes its return to my channel after a long summer over on Alex's channel. Over the summer, Alex covered rides such as Scramblers, Troikas, Huss Jumps, Shaker Rides, and Himalaya Rides. If you missed any of those episodes, be sure to check them out in the playlist in the upper right hand side of your screen, as well as the description below. In addition to the many new rides we plan to cover, we plan on looking back and redoing some of the old episodes and some of the old rides we covered in the past. So if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments below. With all that being said, welcome back to Flat Ride of the Week. This week we'll be looking at the fascinating Zamperla Disco. And just like before, if we forget something or say something that's incorrect, please politely correct us in the comments below. Let's get started. So starting off with the history, the story of the Zamperla Disco starts with the smaller Zamperla Rock and Tug. Introduced in early 2002, the Rock and Tug was a huge success with lots of installations in its debuting year alone. Banking on the success of the Rocking Tug, Zamperla introduced the Disco in 2003. This ride had 24 outward-facing motorbike-like seats placed on the outside of a spinning disc. This disc connected wirelessly to the U-shaped track below. This ride comes in both a transportable and permanent version. This was the original design of the Disco. A few years after this, Zamperla introduced a number of variations on the original design, starting with the Mega Disco 24 and 40. This model uses a larger U-shaped track measuring in at 37.5 meters or 123 feet compared to the original Disco's 24.5 meter or 85 foot length. The Mega Disco comes in a 24 or 40 rider configuration as mentioned earlier, with the 24 rider version becoming the most popular Disco model in existence. The Mega Disco is only available as a permanent model. Then there is the Disco Coaster, which Zamperla likes to call a coaster flat ride hybrid, as it adds a small airtime hill to the ride, making it a much longer and more complete ride experience. This can be configured with the 24 or 40 person gondola also found on the Mega Disco. It is also only available as a permanent model. Next we have the very rare Skater. This ride used a new rectangular gondola that seated 24 riders in a more generic sit-down, inward-facing position. It came in both a transportable and permanent version, and it also is now discontinued. Following this, they introduced the Skater Coaster. Much like the Disco Coaster, this ride has a small airtime hill in the middle of the track that makes the ride feel much more complete. This ride became much more popular than the original Skater and is still in production. This ride can seat up to 36 riders and only comes in a permanent version. The final ride to cover in this general overview is the Surf's Up, which is actually closer to a rocking tug than it is a disco. This ride is essentially a rocking tug with an airtime hill and stand-up restraints, and it comes in both a transportable and permanent version. Another interesting difference between the rock and tug and the disco is that a disco actually has a truck tire underneath that drives the gondola, whereas a rock and tug just uses the normal road wheels that you would expect to power the ride vehicle back and forth. And now the competition. The biggest competition to Zamperla's discos are Chinese manufactured ones. A lot of Chinese and Asian manufacturers make knockoff disco rides. Most of them are knocked off from the Disco 24 model, so the original model, but there's also some manufacturers that make larger models. And there is not much competition from Western manufacturers, other than Fabri who made a skateboard type of ride that's very similar to Zamperla's version. And just like the Zamperla version, it's discontinued, and it was not a big success. And then Italian company EOS made some rides very similar to Zamperla's Disco, named the Mind Blaster. The original model which debuted in 2003 consists of a small half, half pipe with two gondolas that each have 8 inside facing seats, so it has a total capacity of 16 riders per cycle. The gondolas can rotate both clockwise and counterclockwise, and they can also tilt forward. This model is trailer mounted and one of them traveled in Belgium for some years and I got to ride it. It's pretty fun but it feels not, nothing like a disco. Anyway, EOS made a second version of the Mind Blaster named the Mind Blaster 16. This model is more similar to Zamperla's disco. It has a round disc with 16 outside facing seats. Unlike Zamperla's disco, the seats are floorless and they have over the shoulder restraints. The gondola can also tilt. And then they made another version named the Mind Blaster 40. 
This is basically a Zampella Disco 40, but with floorless seats and over-the-shoulder restraints. KMG made a ride similar to EOS's Mind Blaster, named the Swing It. It was built in 2004 and first traveled in the Netherlands. It's basically an EOS Mind Blaster, but the gondolas have two outside facing rows with lap bars, and the gondolas cannot tilt. And then also we cannot go without mentioning the Intamin half pipes, which many people actually consider coasters. And that's understandable as they do actually coast, whereas all these other rides are completely controlled throughout the rest of the layout. The half pipes do use LSMs to boost the ride vehicle up and over and around the U-shaped layout. Whereas obviously these discos are completely controlled. Uh, but if you actually ride one, they do feel very similar to a disco. And personally, I don't really consider them coasters. They're kind of on the line as, as well as discos. Um, and then moving on to some other facts. So me and as well as Luke here have both operated Zamperla Disco variations. Me, I spent uh, a good number of days this summer working the wonderful Pipe Scream, which is a Zamperla Skater Coaster 36 um, at Cedar Point, of course. And Luke has operated the Rock and Tug and Zamperla Mega Disco 24 at Kennywood. Um, so I'm going to go and discuss some of the weird ride operations that persist around pipe scream because it is a very very weird ride so if you are in controls for the wonderful pipe scream uh, there's there's a lot you need to worry about so you have your restraints button which on all these discos is a switch located on the gondola itself you have two switches on the gondola one for the batteries which you use if you lose power and need to get people off um, and then the other one is obviously the normal restraints. This has three positions. It has your open, which is open, close, which allows the bars to move down and up, and then run, which locks them in their current position. They can't move up or down uh, when it is in run. Uh, so you would go and switch it to close. You uh, check all your restraints, slick, switch it to run, and then you would do another visual scan, walk back, and then you can get to starting the ride. So these uh, skater coasters, they actually have a lowering, raising and lowering platform that uh, the round discos do not have. So the skaters have it because there's a gap in between the loading platform and the ride itself because uh, the gondola has to be able to spin freely in that area. Um, so you would go ahead and the first thing you do is lock all your gates and uh, being the super safe ride that this is, there are proxies on every single gate. If anyone's interrupted, the ride will stop. Uh, there are also proxies on every single low zone gate for this ride and that is also a startup condition. If any of those gates are open or if any of those proxies have failed, the ride will not start. Um, once you have done that, you can go ahead and get ready to start. So you will... Um, Pipe Scream has an enable button, so you'd have the person to enable give their clear, and then you can lower the floor. You'd say platform clear going down. Platform will go down. You switch the switch on the panel to lower. It will go down. Uh, but then another weird thing, weird quirk with this, is you can't just leave it and lower to run the ride. you got to switch it to the middle because Zamperla. It, it's stupidly safe, this ride. So once you have done that, you can place your foot on the foot pedal. Um... And then, and only then, oh, you'd have to turn the panel on too. Forgot about that. Um, <laughs> it's pretty important. Then, and only then, um, the person at enable can press their button, and you can press your two dispatch buttons, and then let go, and then press them again until the ride makes sort of a Pac Man sound underneath it and it will start moving. Uh, that is the operations for one of these. Now, if you do any of that in the wrong order, or um, if you like forget to move a switch to the middle and you leave it in down uh, and you try and start the ride, it will throw a discrepancy, which you have to then clear and start over. So this ride is absurdly overly safe, uh, at least with Pipe Scream. Um, there are a few also other functions you can do. It has a touch screen on there, uh, which allows you to do some other cycles like a longer cycle, as well as a counterclockwise rotation and clockwise rotation. As well as in the morning, it will do um, a warm-up cycle where it will just rock back and forth. And that's actually to remove flat spots that develop on the wheels from the ride just sitting there overnight. Um, there's a lot of cool things you can do with Pipe Scream. There's another uh, function is Homing Valley 1 and Valley 2. Obviously, Pipe Scream has the two valleys. You put it in Homing Valley 1, it'll find Home in Valley 1. Or at least try to. And it will do the same thing in Homing Valley 2 if you want to park it over there in Valley 2. 
And that's why I say it's not a coaster, because if you were to say lose power, um, yes, then it will just coast to a stop in the nearest valley, so even in Valley 2. But as soon as you regain power, all you'd have to do is put it in Homing Valley uh, 1 again, and it would pull itself back over to where it's supposed to be in Homing Valley 1. So it's not a coaster. It acts like a coaster, but it's not really a coaster. It does behave different every cycle, and it really does have a mind of its own. Um, because the whole gondola is, of course, wirelessly controlled from the, um, from the track itself. And then also, if you look at a disco, there's like the different rails inside of the rails. That one black rail is actually the traction rail for the tire. And then the other one is just the bus bar that communicates wirelessly to the gondola. So it is a very unique ride and a very overly smart ride. Um, but I know Pipe Scream is, is newer, it debuted in 2014. And it behaves quite a bit differently to the uh, Mega Disco that Luke is familiar with. So, yeah, um, with the Mega Disco, there are a few similarities um, within the programming of how the ride works. Um, if you notice on the Pipe Scream and even the Rock and Tug, there's those long green bars. Um, and the rides are actually almost sort of wireless in some ways where there's sensors all around that track that tell the computer where the uh gondola or in the case of cosmic chaos the mega disco i operated um where our spacecraft or ufo we have um it would tell the computer where it is at any given point on the ride um Along with the pipe, with pipe scream, as Brennan said before, we do have the restraint switch to where we have the open close run, and let's which just is located. Talk about those restraints for a minute on the. Oh, those discos. were those restraints are something. They are um, the most uncomfortable restraints I have ever experienced. But also something I'd want to touch on quickly is that these rides cannot run in the rain. Uh, <laughs> no, they cannot. They cannot. <laughs> uh, Pipe Scream and I'm sure all the other Mega Discos are the same way. Because of all those electronics being completely exposed, um, if it rains, the ride just will not operate. In the best case scenario, it will not work. In the worst case scenario, it will catch fire. So <laughs> you don't want to that... operate one of these in the rain. <laughs> that is one thing um, that the Mega Disco does um, defer from. Uh, they don't catch on fire luckily <laughs> um but with that being said due to the shape of the track there can be sliding that occurs um and the ride will not park properly sometimes and that's one thing where although it's not very common to see it's happened to me a, a good couple of times where the brake doesn't engage until a certain point and it will just be slightly off from the platform mm -hmm. that uh or the stationary platform since the discos are round we are we have like a stationary platform where people can just step down and yeah. exit the ramp to but sometimes if it is uh slippery out it the park right yeah it'll yeah. start sounding like a crying baby dinosaur <laughs> and it will just park a little bit off yeah um and um, in that case is if as long as the opening is more so lined up to the platform it can still be safe to let people out but if it's not lined up with that platform perfectly then that is a point of whenever you would need to get maintenance over to release the brake. You see, with Pipe Scream, it, it pretty frequently didn't have a lot of problems with parking the gondola rotation. It did that pretty well. What it had problems with was finding home. Unlike yours, it's very strict about where it parks. Um, so even if it's just a millimeter off, it will not. It'll just sit there thinking about what it's supposed to do for a minute and not, not actually find home. So you just have moments where you're like, come on, Pipe Scream, find home. It's right there. Come on, find home. So it, it's a yeah, very and... fun ride. Uh, it's, it's very fun to operate. It's, it, I definitely enjoyed being there. Um, but it's it's very complex and very overly safe. I mean, sense. building off to that that you were saying, though, um, sometimes 
the Mega Discos, in my case, being Cosmic Chaos. If ours does not find home, it will not shoot in air, but what it will do is we have a automatic stoplight that flashes at the end of the ride, mm -hmm. um, indicating that it's safe to let people off. If that light is still um, solid from the ride going, it would end up faulting the ride if you were to try to open the restraints. Mm -hmm. Um, if it's not completely parked properly, and that is why you always have to be extremely cautious as a ride operator to always make sure you are doing your visual checks, whether it be during the ride, at the beginning of the ride, or the end of the ride. And that's one thing with Zamperla rides that they do extremely well, is just adding in those extra safety features. Yeah, I mean, especially this one. It's, it's just so over the top. Um... But I, I never did have to rehome Pipe Scream. I've seen it done. Um, but if you do ever have a situation where it doesn't find home, you would just tell it to put it in Homing Valley 1, and then it would home its way over to Homing Valley 1 and hopefully find home the second time. Mm -hmm. um, there's no real way to unload it if it doesn't find home because the platform won't go up. So you just have to get maintenance involved at that point. Um, and when it does do a homing valley, it's kind of funny. It'll spin itself around and go crazy. It's really kind of funny to watch because uh, it doesn't know where it is. So it's, it's, and, a, and it's a funny that's little one, ride. Yeah, I mean, that's also one of the cool things about if there is ever an emergency on the ride or if you have a guest illness. Oh, yeah, Autumn, guest illnesses the, are problem, problems on these. Oh, they they are. I have cleaned up my fair share. Well, well, the of... annoying thing for me is coming from an aero ride with a sloped platform that you can get as wet as you want uh, to going to this with a flat platform that you can't use water on. <laughs> Cle mm -hmm. Cleaning up guest illnesses there is a lot more difficult than cleaning up guest illnesses at the rides I'm used to. So anyway, I think that about concludes everything we really want to mention with ride operations. If you have any questions, I'll be sure to mention them below. Maybe we'll do a part two. Maybe we'll do just a three hour live stream of me and Luke talking about how to operate discos but well, um, only three hours <laughs> yeah. I go on for hey, four you know, if you guys are interested maybe we'll do it but uh, anyway Alex would like to mention one more fact and then we're going to go ahead and close out the video yeah so there's a quite well known video of a disco falling apart uh, it's from India and as you may expect it's not a real Zamperla disco as you might have heard in the explanation of the operations, Zamperla discos are extremely safe. And the one shown in the video is probably an Asian knockoff. So you can 100% trust the Zamperla discos, they're very safe. And yeah, these Asian knockoffs are probably not safe at all. Now, that's most, actually a major as problem know. for Zamperla. I know they issued a very big notice on their site about how unsafe a lot of these knockoff rides are, even though they look like Zamperlas, at least at first. Yeah. And then I think that about concludes everything everyone here has to say, at least in a condensed fashion, about Zamperla discos. Uh, do you, any of you have any closing remarks? Yeah, sure. Zamperla discos, they're very fun rides. But yeah, as you mentioned before, the restraints are not the most comfortable ones. But from my ex experience, it's okay. It's not comfortable, but it's not. It doesn't hurt or something. I definitely uh, can say I enjoy working discos more than I enjoy riding them because I've ridden both <laughs> Pipe Scream and the uh, Mega Disco 24 once. So <laughs> we'll see. I will probably ride if I see a different model again, but uh, it, it's not a priority for me. But I think that about concludes this video. If you do have a disco at your home park that you, perhaps you've never rode, then I suggest you go ride it. They're very interesting rides, to say the least. Uh, but thank you for watching, and we will hopefully see you next week.